Hey, hey, welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura, if you're new to the channel, and I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Know that energy is fluid. Take the message as it best resonates. Also know, on this channel, I like to dive deep. So we look at everything, but the readings are longer because we take time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play out as karmic themes within your experiences. Just had coffee and it was re repeating on me. Um, all right. So the readings have a therapy style to them is what I'm trying to say. And they're because there's a lot of information because a lot of times we we know how a person feels about us. We don't know why it looks the way that it does. We don't know why we attract what we attract. We don't know how to change the dynamic of the connection. And a lot of times we just feel stuck within like um, a karmic pattern and a karmic pattern could be just, um, I feel like we keep living like the same experience over and over and over again, which makes us have intimacy problems, trust problems, trust that its core foundation is really intimacy. And that's friendship, it's trust, it's not being, the person's not able to be transparent with you. So you feel like there's a detachment, you feel like you, you, you feel like this person's hiding things from you. And then what happens is, is it creates problems, like I said, within the relationship. And then there's the escapism mechanism that a lot of times follows with people that have spiritual blocks. So when you change the dynamic of your relationship, what you're doing is you're changing yourself. That's really what you're being asked to do because the dynamic of the relationship wouldn't be happening unless you were vibrating at the same vibrational frequency, which means that you have the same core beliefs. You might have the same wounds as this person. They don't play out as the same behaviorisms it winds up being like a runner chaser. It winds up being like almost like paradoxal energy, opposite energy that winds up triggering. So to understand allows you to see things from a much higher perspective. And that means you're seeing things through the lens of unconditional love. Now, I like to do these readings because they're empowering, they're healing, and you are the alchemist of your life. So all you need to do is have awareness to implement new things. And like I said, it changes you. And that is what makes it healing. Now, before we jump in, I want to do a quick shout out to my favorite jewelry place, Otter Spirit. This company is awesome. And I'm going to tell you why. They have crystal jewelry. And I love crystal jewelry because why it crystals represent psychological and emotional aspects of ourselves. They work as medicine. And so when you wear jewelry, crystal jewelry, it aligns your energy system. It aligns your chakras. Because when we go through experiences that make us out of balance, we wind up forming imbalances through our behaviorisms, through of the thoughts that we think, the emotions that aren't being integrated and transmuted. So... You go through a traumatic experience. That could be a dark night of the soul. It could be a major breakup. It could be a death. I'm wearing the, the grief bracelets because I just lost my husband two months ago. But they have um, combinations in every single assortment. I love the abundance one. I have a thing for green. I don't know. I think it's that my, my spirit wants me to wear green to open up my heart more. I know I have blocks around my heart. Um, just because I'm a healer doesn't mean I'm 100% healed. That's how it works. So we need tools to align ourselves with the energy that we need to integrate. And we're not aware of it, but the crystals do it for us when you wear it. And I know that that sounds really stupid and really like, oh, who do do do. But the truth of the matter is, is that the earth, it vibrates at a certain frequency you are supposed to be vibrating at the same frequency as the earth because you are not separate from the universe. You're not separate from God. That's what allows us to be supernatural. That is what really allows us to create our heaven on earth. 
but we get out of balance. We just get out of balance because we interact with people, situations, these readings, you know, when you listen to these readings, a lot of times they're triggering because you're listening to how the person mistreated you. So we can take that on like it's our own. So we get out of balance. So we need something to help create the balance in our life. And even if it's every time you glance down at the bracelets, it brings you back to that energy, reminds you, hello, get grounded. Because grief, a lot of times that's what you need. That's why you have this dark stone here, you know, um, grounded. This is a very grounding stone. I don't know what, what stone it is. I forgot, but it's. I know that this is amethyst and this is rhodonite and rhodonite opens up the heart. And amethyst is a crown chakra. It keeps you connected to the higher self, the God part of self, part of the universe that gives us that claircognience, clairsentience, which is, I don't know how I knew that, I just knew. And because that a lot of times is the energy that gets us through difficult times of grief. And to be able to open up our heart strong enough to continue to give love. Because when we lose somebody, we want to shut our heart down, right? We don't want to keep it open. And, oh, I'm getting emotional. And grounding to help us stay emotional. Uh, not emotional, uh, too emotional. We don't want to be too emotional. Because again, then people tend to perceive us the wrong way. Oh, I'm getting emotional. See, talking about grief. Got to look at the braces. Got to look at the braces. <laughs> Got to look at the braces. <laughs> They're working overtime. They're working overtime. Woo! <laughs> mm. You know, it just goes on like that, you know, when you lose somebody. Woo! Okay. And so what's so great about this company is that they give a dollar of the proceeds to every for every bracelet they sell, they give one dollar to save the otters. Woo! <laughs> you know, trying to hold back emotions is a difficult thing. You know, you can't do it, especially when you're an empath. I just can't do it. <laughs> That's that supernatural power that we have. When you channel the emotions, they they. They turn into energy and that's energy that we can use to our purpose. So it's not uncommon when you lose someone to uh, be able to channel that negative energy. And it's negative energy because it's sad energy. It's not, it's energy that still needs to be processed, right? And it's a hard process. Like I said, it makes us want to shut down our heart. So to be able to have a company that you know is in alignment with your best and highest purpose and good is also what's best for humanity and that's what they show because like i said the otters were almost extinct in california and because of their ongoing you know effort to raise some sort of money to help is what's keeping them alive is what's uh, enabling them to you know create proper habitats for the otters to live. And that's huge because so many of our beautiful animals are becoming extinct because the world is out of balance, because the world does not incorporate spiritual information. Spiritual information is understanding why things happen so that we can change so that we can evolve and so we can evolve into the highest state of consciousness so that we can create our heaven on earth so we can ground our spiritual energy a lot of people they know that they're spiritual but they're not grounded okay so if you know how the game is played <laughs> it's if you want to enter into winning a free reading, that is, this is the game. You have to like the video. You have to subscribe to the channel and you have to write the word of the video in your comment bar. The word of the video is always on the first card that I pull out. And it's the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing. That's really important when we're looking at people that are walking around with spiritual blocks and shadows and they're projecting 
and they're, you know, acting so out of alignment with what we feel about them, with what we perceived about them. See, when you meet your soulmate, and that's any type of soul family, that could be a karmic mate, it could be a twin flame, it could be a, just a soul soulmate and anyone could be your soulmate the mailman could be your soulmate it's anyone that comes into your life that changes your life that's that's what it is someone that shows you a different perception that teaches you and so that affects you to become better a better version of you and a lot of times that happens through pain and suffering that's what the karmic mate is right that when we need to learn so we always want to know what this underlining energy is because that's going to tell us why everyone's doing what they're doing. They create facades, illusions, masks because of the shadows and the shadows are parts of ourselves that we reject, parts of ourselves that we think are broken, parts of ourselves that we feel like don't work. They just don't work. And spirit says, no, you're blocked. You're blocked from seeing everything and understand God. The universe is all knowing. We are not. We live in a universe that is spiritually out of alignment. We grow up in families that are out of balance. And it doesn't mean that they don't love us. What it means is they have their own spiritual issues. They're just people too. And that they are given their family is the same as we are to learn to experience, to see things from a different perception. And a lot of times what we have to learn is to see things from a new perception when we come from spiritually out of balance homes. I know I grew up in one. I grew up in a environment where my dad drank from the second that he got up till the second he went to bed to escape his life. Got cancer eight times, nine times, had upper and lower back surgery, two hip replacements, but was a genius, skipped grades in school, very logical, very analytical. And then my mother that was emotionally out of balance, spiritually out of balance because she was abused. And she was abused because my grandfather fought in World War II. World War II, you're trying to like, he lived in survival. Again, the environment, collective ancestral karma you know the ancestral karma it was a lot of times formed from what was going on collectively is what i'm saying and if you know your scripture or any spiritual literature it doesn't matter what religion it'll tell you that you have inherited that karma and it comes out within your behaviorisms and that's what activates your dna that's what turns on certain genes. So when we see sickness and disease, it's only 5% inherited. So understand when you're doing shadow work, which is the work that we're doing within these readings, within this channel, you have the opportunity to break that ancestral generational karma. We need all the tools that we can get, right? I mean, we're going to utilize everything to become the best version of ourselves, especially if you know that you can create your heaven on earth, right? You're going to want to really step into that power, that power of who you are. And let me tell you that supernatural power. So let's see what we're dealing with here. We're seeing what your person feels about you. We're going to see what their spiritual blocks are. We're going to see how they played out, obviously, but why they played out and why are you attracting this person into your life? What do you need to learn? What needs to be integrated? What needs to be transmuted in order for you to evolve into the highest state of consciousness? So the word is perfectionism. Perfectionism. Oh, you know what that means, don't you? It means shame. Whenever we try to be perfect, it means we feel so flawed. It means that we don't know who we are. It means that we're looking at ourselves from a place of limitation, lack, dysfunction. And that's because we're judging ourselves on what's happened. And if we've grown up in ancestral karma, and that's really what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, this is the end of the line. You're number 700. You have the opportunity to break that karma. What's the karma? 
the karma is not knowing who you are. So when you don't know who you are, you don't love who you are. And when you don't love who you are, you always look for the answer outside of yourself. And so you form codependent relationships, which are more attachment style, which is so I feel like you're connected to someone that from the outside, yeah, like from their Instagram gram page and from their Facebook page, they look dynamite, you know, they look great. Um, but is that really who they are? No. Do they ever let you get close to who they are? No. Because if you got close, you would see their flaws and they feel inadequate. And so the energy that's underlining what this person is doing is really shame. Because we don't try and act perfect. Your mind can't be in two places at one time. If you're so busy trying to be perfect, you're not letting the unique unfoldment process happen. The unique unfoldment process happens for all of us when we have a love affair with ourselves, when we are acting like child, be like childlike, right? Because then we don't have expectations. So when we grow up with ancestral karma, a lot of times it's that there's unrealistic expectations put onto us at a young age. That's why there's shame. And so that shame will play out within relationships, so this is the underlining energy. Now let's see what your person did. We don't want to get too caught up in what they did because obviously we know it's not going to be good. Shame is, is like the worst energy. You're going to see the worst behaviorisms because it's, the, it's such a heavy energy. It's a self-loathing energy. And that's so out of alignment with our high self, the God part of self. God's like, I gave you free will, but you're not allowed to choose that. That's the against the universe's law you have to love yourself first because the divinity is inside of you and if you're hating yourself well you're not going to be able to create heaven because the kingdom of heaven's inside of you if you can imagine it you can create it so you're so out of alignment and so you're gonna see things like resentment you're gonna see like real lower like I said, energies, resentment, addiction problems, cheating, usually addiction, right? When we don't feel good, you don't feel good. It's a root chakra imbalance. When you hold on to shame, it means that you don't know who you are. It means that you can't stay in that energy. You actually detach and disassociate from that energy. So it's almost like you're watching yourself. It's like you never really feel present. You never really feel whole you're not grounded you're so up in your head so stuck in your behaviorisms to create the balance again savior so this person wanted you to be like a savior i feel like where they also have the tendency to be the fixer right so where does when we have shame it's because we see that we're inadequate well, when do we see that we're inadequate because we had unrealistic expectations put on us at a young age? And I think we, meaning you and them, not just them, because the the energy here is how this affected you. And so savior is, well, this person expected me to come in and save them and it triggered me. Well, it triggered you because I feel like you were the broken healer of your family. You were the fixer and the fixer that got nothing for it, but then was expected. And that's what this person, this person is the fixer of their family. They're the fixer of whatever goes wrong in their life. But in that, they're seeing, they're, everybody knows that they're seeing, they see themselves as broken. And so when we see that ourself is as broken, there's shame because we're embarrassed of that part of ourselves. And that's why we detach and disassociate from ourselves. And so this person is more up in their minds. So I feel like you are having a connection with somebody, but they're not, you're not, it's it's more ESP. It's of the heart and mind. Because this person is not really, they're not really living their life. They're avoiding their life. 
that's what I, that's what I'm feeling. If we're the, the savior for everyone else and we want to seem as if we're good enough, but that's, so I feel like your person has this issue where they still are trying to like prove themselves to their family, to certain people in their life, instead of like focusing on their own life. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that energy because you too had experienced that at one time. You're never going to believe this. And that's, I'm telling you, perfectionist, these are your cards. So I'm seeing a lot of mirroring energy here where you might be saying, why is this person in my life? What is it that I need to learn? Because I already saw they weren't, they didn't give me energy. They're the fixer of other people. They're the fixer of, they're the savior for everybody else, but they don't give me anything. And if anything, it brings me back to a time where that, you know, I was that person. And if anything, I feel like it triggers you because you're like, well, see, now I'm still not getting what I want because I, even though I am not stuck in that energy, the person that I am spiritually connected to that I would like to be with has that energy. And that's what I feel like there's a sense that you're being affected by it, which that's where the imbalance is because spirit's saying, so you're not per se fixing it, coming in and fixing it, but your mind is there. And how do you manifest through the thoughts that you think, the emotions that you have? So you're allowing it to affect you where you already know that there's no such thing as perfection. We shoot for excellence. Uh, everybody has their own unique individuality that's the unfoldment process. We find it. We find our unique style. And that's when we're co-creating with the universe and mastery comes in doing. This person's not grounded. Like I said, they're in the ESP realm through the heart and mind. But we have to be grounded in order to become ourselves. So it's almost like this person feels inadequate because they don't know who they are. Where I feel like you do know who you are. Where it's, again, this person just makes you feel forgotten about. It's like, because they're not capable, you're looking at this person like they're healed. I feel like they showed you who they wanted to show you, which obviously when we feel so inadequate, we do try to overcompensate. That's a, known as a second chakra imbalance. We're overcompensating. And that could be... I'm going to undercompensate how much energy I give to you to make you think that I'm more valuable than I actually am because I feel inadequate. It's like it's an intimacy problem, but intimacy at its core is trust. And that's because this person was shamed at a young age, meaning instead of being supported and loved and guided I was shamed. I was told I wasn't good enough. Whatever I was doing wasn't good enough, but I was conditioned and I was conditioned in a young age to give my energy to fix, to heal the broken healer. And I feel like you were a broken healer, but you healed that. Again, this person, it's like you feel powerless. And so again, that's really what it is. It's like you feel forgotten and powerless because obviously you can't do anything about it. This person you realize that this person has to come to a place where they're willing to set down the boundaries, but they're afraid of abandonment. And the, But the thing is, it's like they're so afraid of abandonment because they haven't created themselves yet. You know, when we don't know who we are, it's like we depend too much on the people outside of ourselves. We depend too much on things staying the same. We don't like change. And it's a real root chakra imbalance. It's that, oh, I can't have change because I don't trust myself. You're not afraid of change when you know yourself because you know, as one door closes, the other door opens. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. The universe always conspires to bring you what you need. Sometimes we don't like what you know the universe brings us. 
And you're like, oh, we need to go to college for another three years. It's like, oh, I don't like that. But Spirit will say, this is what you need. Whatever it is that you need. What if you ask to become something? Well, I'm going to bring you the tools that <laughs> you're going to need. Doesn't mean that you like it. And most likely, if it causes you to grow, you're not going to 100% like it because it's emotionally uncomfortable. It's physically, it can be uncomfortable. Past. Again, it's almost like you had a hard time of letting go of the past and the fears associated with it. So they manifest in chaos in the relationships. And this is what you realize from this relationship. You're realizing that even though you are not the wounded healer anymore, it's still manifesting within your relationships. That's what this just told me, because these are your cards where spirit's saying, well, you're not powerless now. So there's a disconnect from body and mind, and that happens from severe trauma. So that energy isn't 100% transmuted. It means that you learned there's new awareness and you, you know, you're living, you've embodied a new life. However, the energy is still coming to you because the negative energy from all those years of living that way and not seeing a new way unfold, you're still holding on to the energy. That energy is not transmuted. So then you become a magnet still from all those old experiences. So this is what the universe is trying to tell you. But the universe never just lets one person heal by creating awareness. It's a, it's a two-way street. And the two-way street is everyone's looking at each other. And they're saying... It, they're getting triggered everyone's looking everyone's getting triggered but everyone's like looking has to be look inside of themselves we don't normally look inside of ourselves until something happens something traumatic happens in a relationship when you think that you're connected to someone that you perceive they're a certain way and then you realize that you're not as connected but you're connected more to their traumas and this is what what it is it's like you're connected to this person's energy but where it's a soul connection where when you met this person you recognize them but you don't know what type of soul family they are this person is a past life karmic mate they are not a twin flame they can feel like a twin flame so I feel like you energetically, you keeping your mind and your emotion is attached to this person still. And it's because you haven't fully transmuted the negative energy. So there's still a karmic cord that connects you to that old life that bounds you to that time that you were the, the broken healer, the fixer. And being that you don't really want to be the broken healer, you might want to be the healer, but you definitely don't want to be the broken healer because that means that you're not, it, broken healers get sick, they get, they, they, they're martyrs, they're not, that's not what, what you're trying to do. You want to be evolved. And so spirit again brought this person to you. Now I feel like, you the way that you live would create an awareness for this person on how they need to live you know it's again we're catalysts for growth you know that's what the universe does brings people it could be your best friend it could be your it's everybody it's everybody that touches your life even me right now you're giving me energy somehow i am creating something within your life it's like influencing your life. If you're giving, if you're giving me longer than five minutes, you know what I mean? It's like any person that you continually give your energy to is what I'm talking about, has the power to influence you, to change you. And so usually it's the people that do is what we give our energy to because it feels good. It uplifts us. It gives us a shot of serotonin, of of that dopamine hit that we so need if we are holding on to shame. Shame is heavy. 
it, it means we need to let go. We need to let go of the thoughts and the emotions, usually the pain and the resentment and the not forgiving. Because if we come from a place of shame and we were shamed from little children, it's you, you, you're only human. You do have a spirit part of self. Every child does. Eventually the child turns, turns cold turns bitter, gets resentful. So, and then when we're holding on to that energy, it feels even worse. So, and, and then that's when we do get sick because then we're looking for things outside of ourselves to try to create the balance. We don't know why we're doing what we're doing, but it comes out as dishonesty, really. This person tends to, you feel like lies and it's deception. And they, they do because they're living more from their addictions. That's what's going to happen when you, again, are not, not living your own life. When you're expecting someone to come in and be your savior, because that's the role that you play, but you don't know how to do it for yourself. And that's why it would be a karmic lesson. That's how we know that this would be a karmic, a karmic, uh, a past life karmic mate. That if you gave your energy to this person, listen, if the airplane goes down, you put the oxygen on everybody else and not take oxygen. It's like, because let me tell you, you'd wind up not giving that many people oxygen because you'd be passed out. You have to be strong within yourself. And Spirit that was saying, it's like you learn the lesson. It's like you had to go through this lesson because it's again, you might have, you might have in your previous relationship been codependent, the fixer, the doer, but at such a self sacrificing thing that you were overlooked and people didn't respect you. They didn't treat you from the highest perception of how they can. When we're, again, coming from our true self, our higher self, people see us through the way that they're supposed to see us. They're not seeing us through the filter of our wound because a lot of times our wound will trigger someone else. That's how it works. It's, again, you're a mirror of whom, what comes into your life. Yeah, no, they, what did I say? What did I say? I said, it, this person would humiliate you. It's again, they would abuse you. They, they. It's again, they're not. Because if you're with somebody that's wounded and you are not wounded and you try to do yourself, this person will obviously will get jealous because everybody has a spirit part of self. Everyone has a God part of self. Everybody knows what they should so even subconsciously they know that they're supposed to live their own life we know when we're getting manipulated we know when we're giving too much to people that we don't want to it's like oh i gotta deal with my mother-in-law i don't really want to you know what i mean a lot of times we're we're like oh i gotta you know give energy to someone that i really don't want to it's like because they're family or because whatever it is. So we learn how to balance it out where we do go along once in a while, but we also don't make it like it's like top 10 list. You know what I mean? Like if something comes up, I'm going to, you know, not be afraid to not show up. I'm going to be my real self. This person doesn't. What they do is they cower down and they become who they think their environment wants them to be. That's what the broken healer does. They're the fixer, they're the healer, they're the pamperer, they're very codependent, but then they're not getting what they need and they're really looking for it outside. So if you come in and you give this person love and then you decide to do your own life, well, then this person is not going to be honest to you because they're not being honest to them self and the higher self knows when they're living out because that's the god part of self is saying like you're with someone that's like doing all that and they're having a good time they're loving their life they, they would get jealous that's human nature because that's their spirit saying well why don't you have that they get jealous because they say i can't have that 
but they can. But the wounded healer chooses not to because they're too afraid. Where spirit says, you, you be with them, this person will ruin you. They'll ruin you. There's punishment for, for that because jealousy is just what happens with the wound if the person's not willing to heal. And what we see here, if I saw that, then they're not willing to heal. Doesn't matter how much they love you. They want you to bend to them, to fix it. And I don't, that's not love. That's lust. Yeah, they see you as uh, someone that's compassionate but, and, and helpful, but that energy is mainly to be like to give to the universe spirit saying, right? This is how they see you. So it's like they want to be the benefactor of that energy they want you to care for them okay but you're coming from a more ethical standpoint the, the wounded healer is not they're still damaged and they're damaged because of the experiences they're yes there is a desire to heal because it does feel good to heal however they're doing it for a motive where the true healer doesn't do anything for a motive they're doing it because they want to literally do it so they're clean so that they see things from a very clear they're a clear conduit for spirit to work through really if you're a broken healer you're not it's like you're still it's still going to come out in your behaviorisms because you're still denying self and there is a god part of self that says i'm not going to sacrifice so i'm going to go out then and i'm going to binge I'm going to do something outside of myself to reward myself. So why shouldn't I? So this is where the imbalance, this is where the sabotaging behavior comes from, which is at the root of shame, which is why the person feels the need to be perfect and then didn't let you into their life. But you realize I'm not going to come in. I can see what you do. And it's like they phrase things a certain way to make you feel, to trigger you. It's all the manipulation that you grew up with. To try to get you to do what they wanted you to do. And that's when you were the broken healer. Well, this person is, again, doing the same thing. So you recognized it. The spirit says, well, you always have to go through the experience in order to do something different. It's, again, they wanted you to sacrifice. And where really, you know, what it is, is like to let go. And that's what I was saying. It's like, because you, you're not going to, you're not going to just like give up on what your life that's really what it comes down to and that's notice how it we, I, I see a cemetery that's really what it would be it'd like to be with a person like this because then they don't do it for themselves so you would never be able to get the emotional reciprocity that you need from this person because they wouldn't respect you they don't respect themselves they look for the respect outside to people that will never give them respect because being the broken healer means that they've been doing it for so long it becomes expected. It's not appreciated. It keeps them bound to that lower energy until they finally decide to say enough. Well, you know, it'll never change. And so you have to say, again, what else were you supposed to learn? from the situation because I don't see this person breaking away. I don't. They're too used to someone coming in and fixing it, being the savior and sacrificing and so that that person that they're with then inherits their negative karma, really. And it's like, because they're going to pay the consequence, you know, because this person is not going to, doesn't do it for themselves, doesn't know how to, be true to themselves. Protection, card number one. Card number two, shame. What did I say? What did I say? The broken healer. Again, but you're not anymore. But shame is such a heavy energy. We got to let go, man. Isolation. I don't like any of these cards. These cards are dark cards. These darks are heavy cards, right? We can feel the heaviness. Ooh, I don't like it. Time and attention. 
we pull six, I'm afraid. I'm like, it's all crap, <laughs> you know? They're pain, they're painful cards. Support. Disassociation. Well, obviously it's because you went through a lot of trauma. That's why you were the broken healer. You weren't protection. What do we see as our par parents? Our parents are supposed to give us support and they do so by giving us time and attention. But if they have so much trauma themselves and they're not making their lives work, now we've inherited this ancestral karma, which is why we become the broken healer. Because that unconditional love that we have for our parents when we're children, we want to give, we want to do, we want, we want to do that. That's the right thing to do. That it's a survival mechanism also, because emotionally we won't get what we need unless we become that broken healer. Then we get ignored because we can't, they can't deal with their own life. It's not that they don't love. It's that there was no spiritual help. So they inherited the collective karma. They inherited the ancestral karma and they live from that lower perception and created worlds. And like I said, you're like number 700. It's like number 700, you know, it's like you've inherited that load of karma. You see that mountain, Mount Everest? That's how much karma that you inherited. And you're like, where the fuck did that come from? And spirits saying it came from all those 700 years of generational karma, uh, ancestral karma, collective karma. There's a lot of karma. And so spirit saying, so they couldn't be there. It wasn't that they didn't love. They did the best that they could do with the information that they have. So they weren't able to give you the time and support. So whenever you had to deal with anything traumatic you went into isolation like little kids do they 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 ha don't have help they don't have help so they need to figure things out so they like go into hiding to do that and they are always alone so what they always find is that whenever they go through a really difficult situation later on in life that they're always alone and I feel like that's what happened you went through a really difficult time and there was no support for you which again, you're looking to this person and saying, well, where were you for me? And this person is like, they couldn't be there for themselves. So they have a lot of shame for not being there for you. But spirits saying, that's not your shame. That's their shame because they wanted to be there for you, but they couldn't be there for you while be there, the fixer for everyone else, the healer for everyone else. So they sacrificed themselves again. And they are the wounded healer because that's the what the wounded healer does. You do not, but they stay disassociated where you integrated that self. You are no longer disassociated from those energies, but you had to go through this traumatic experience to fully integrate so that you were wouldn't stay disassociated because that past trauma from no one being there and no support and then going through whatever traumatic experience you went through and not having support activated that trauma and again you obviously would expect this person to be there for you but spirit said you don't need anyone there that you are your own support you you again gave yourself the, the time and attention by creating yourself, that's how you find protection. There was no protection, always feeling fear when you watch your parents struggle, when you grow up into family karma where they're, you watching your parents suffer, suffer financially, suffer within their relationships, suffer the way that they treat themselves. This is what inheriting trauma is. And that's what you're doing when you're inheriting karma that's collective and when it's you know built on wars and and fear and severe trauma we weren't taught how to spiritually protect ourselves so spirit saying you've come to a place within your evolution that you do know because you've done the shadow work however the energy still isn't fully transmuted you had to go through the experience to actually see yourself different 
but then it's what do we do with the leftover emotional energy because that energy just isn't gone because you're like oh well it's gone it's like no we take the energy and we channel it and we channel it into purpose and that we give the time and attention to ourselves we grow ourselves with that emotional energy and that is what makes a way where there is no way just for you and spirit says you take positive action that's what you do because to fully transmute the negative energy it needs to be grounded it's not just going through the experience okay now you got to see yourself different but you're going to take positive action by focusing on the beauty that's inside of you meaning what are you passionate about what are you good at what do you what do you love about yourself it's like, and if you don't know, you have to, again, have a love affair with yourself and find out. You have to invest in yourself to find out. But you focus on yourself and you find your silence because in the silence is where you, again, connect to the higher self. The higher self is God for the self. That only happens in the now. You have to be grounded, though, and not worried and not, again, you have to be calm and happy and focus on the good, and live and honor the present. Like I said, be in the now, be in the moment, because only in the now do you get divine guidance. And then we're not focused on the past of what happened, or the future of what might happen, what could happen, because then we're going to miss the, the signs and the symbols that the universe gives to us which happens every day that when we're interactive in our own life, when we're grounded in our own life, when we're feeding our passions, our hobbies, our interests, and we a, a, a whole life begins to unfold for us. So we take this positive action so that we can actually create new neurological pathways from creating new experiences. This is how we really change from the inside out to really fully transmute that negative energy. And what you realize that you cannot change, you let go and you let the universe change it because we don't have control over people and we don't have control over a lot of things, but we do have control over ourselves. So spirit says, so it's always about you taking the positive actions that are going to grow your life. And that is by contributing to to your life by putting giving your time yourself time to again connect to other deep relationships to feed other hobbies and interests like i said so that a new way unfolds where you may meet other broken healers but you won't entertain them you'll see them and you'll You'll always be kind and, and, and nice, but you'll be it's so busy in your life that those people are not going to expect you to be the savior. When you're having a love affair with yourself and you're really invested in your life and connected to people emotionally, people know they're not going to go towards a person that is like that because they, they know that that person can say, I'm sorry, I don't have time. We only have so much time, energy, focus and money. So when we hold on to energies like shame, that we self-loathe, we have to change the way that we view ourselves. And that's not by trying to fix someone else's life. That's what I see here. This person avoids their life. And in that, it costs them the connection that they wanted to have. They wanted you to come in and do all the work. And that's what the broken healer want, expects when meanwhile, they're, they're fixing everyone else's life. And that happens again because they're not really fully grounded. They're the the trauma from the past experience, they, they're detached from it. It's almost like they're watching someone else. So they're watching their life. But having a connection to you in the ESP realm, in that astro realm, is actually safer for this person because the wounded healer over time will trick themselves into believing that they're doing a good thing even though they're not, they're not, it's like there's consequences for not loving yourself that there's not. And you stay in a low energy because people don't respect it over time. It becomes expected. 
All right, I'm going to leave that there, Virgo. You let me know how you resonated with this one, and I'll talk to you soon. And don't forget to give a shout out to my favorite jewelry brand. The link for 20% off is in the bio, as well as a link about their company. So you want to definitely check them out. All right, love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.